Welcome to The Walk Off. I'm Scott Belford, joined as always by Adam Mack. This is our Tuesday stream night, which means we have got our mailbag. So we're going to go into all of our comments from YouTube and some of our socials over the week. We're also going to go into our Discord and grab some questions and comments there. I know we had quite a few this week, so we'll get to it. And then, of course, once the game starts, we start live streaming. So if you're joining in right now, we are live. However, you are going to need to wait another 20 minutes or so, and then we can start uh, interacting with you. All right, buddy. What do we got this week? Okay, so quick one right off the top here. Uh, Bradley on Instagram says, uh, Vladdy finally hitting home runs again. Can he catch Otani? Of course, Otani has 42, and Vladdy has 38. So he is still four behind him. 33 games remaining. Do you think he can catch him, Scott? Personally, I don't think so. Personally, I think Otani has this. Can Otani do 50? I think Otani is going to hit around, if I'm guessing, 46 to 48, and I think Vladdy finishes around 44. Okay. Close. Those I, are really, I really would love I'm to see. I'm cheering for Vladdy. I mean, obviously, we're a Blue Jays podcast. I'd love to see him overtake Shoha, uh, Shohei, but I don't think so. I think it would be cool to see Otani hit 50. Me too, man. Just such a, a nice, round, perfect milestone number. Yeah, so. especially for a guy who's going to be in the running for the Cy Young Award, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Pretty good. <laughs> All right, uh, so this is a comment on the Dara Harris interview from last week. Scott oh, McCutcheon nice. says, uh, what a great interview. So much insight into behind-the-scenes se- behind things uh, that I wonder about watching baseball. I think really just listening to someone who's obviously pretty smart holds so much value that I got really sucked in. That's awesome, Scott. Thanks for yeah. the comment. And yeah, Dara was amazing. Absolutely. Whenever, Adam, you start reading positive comments, I'm like, oh, what's coming down the pike? (laughs) Where's the butt? (laughs) But for sure, Dara Harris was fantastic. Of course, the assistant director for the high performance department. That interview in its entirety is up on our YouTube page right now. We talked to her last week, and she sat down with us for a full hour and got right into everything. So definitely check that out if that piques your interest at all. Adam's dog is probably doing something right now that he got up really quick. No, I, I, my wife decided now would be a good time to boil water and then left the room <laughs> probably to go have a shower. So, oh, my I'm just girl turning does the that kettle too. That's great. I'm glad we deal yeah. with similar things. Just turn great. the stove on, put the water great. on and go away. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to grab the mail. I'll be right back. Yeah. Okay. So moving on now, uh, the blind Mamba on last week's news episode commented, uh, I think even if Barrios leaves, there, that he's here for a year and a half to mentor Manoa, whose stuff is almost identical. Kind of like Springer signing. Bring in r- winners to teach the young guys. I mean, I think he nails it there. This is a very young core. This is still one of the youngest teams in baseball, despite the fact that the expectations in Toronto and amongst uh, Blue Jays Nation is pretty high. However, this is a group of guys that if you start going down the list of Vladdy and uh, Bo and yeah, even and I, Alec Manoa, who's in the middle of his rookie season here, I mean, absolutely some mentorship and some experience goes a heck of a long ways, especially when you're bringing in guys like Springer and Burrios. Well, and who, Simeon is an, another exact example for that. Exactly. I loved how he brought up, too, how similar – Burrios and Manoa's delivery is, and it really mm-hmm. is. So maybe that has had something to do with the front office's thinking and bringing them in. Could be. Uh, sticking with the Burrios topic, uh, Judy and Steve, uh, who came to our channel during the trade of uh, Burrios, they're Twins this. fans. <laughs> they say, uh, how are you liking Burrios now? He's always imploded for the Twins in August and September. Bad outings lead to more bad outings for him. He has trouble letting go of bad games. Loving from a woeful Twins fan. <laughs> so I looked into this because I thought, well, this is just sour grapes. Um, so I went back through, I, like I wrote off the 2020 season. That's an aberration, right? The shortened season. Mm-hmm. But I did look at his uh, first half versus second half splits uh, from 2018 and 2019. So those were two seasons where he was an all-star. And in let's just look at 2018 first first half of the year. So this is right till the end of June. 
His ERA was 3.15, and in the second half of the season, 4.6. Ooh, that is a pretty big rise there in ERA. We won't we won't go like too into the weeds here on stats like K's per nine and walks per nine, but they but kind of rose in the same drop, direction eh? yeah. uh, as the ERA. But one uh, thing I do wish to to bring up about this though, um, the guy is twenty seven. Yeah. So there is room for improvement here, especially if we're just going to write off his age twenty six year in twenty twenty, and now what we're talking about when he was twenty five, twenty four. You know what? Especially when it comes to being one of the best, becoming an ace, which is the dream, obviously, with Barrios. It takes some experience, man. It look does. A, look at the year Robbie Ray's putting together in his age 29 season, right? And this is a guy that everyone just had kind of written off as a high strikeout, high walk dude who's never going to have control, and he found it. So to just completely write off Burrios as a closer, and when I say closer, I don't mean the position. I just mean, like, as a guy who finishes, you know, right. as a guy who can be counted on, who is uh, clutch, as they say, right? That comes well, with experience. It, it comes with being put in clutch situations and being in playoff races, and qu- we're hoping quick, that Burrios puts it together. Quickly here on Burrios, yep. I'm just going to give you his 2019 uh, stats. Uh, ERA through the first half, 2.84. ERA so through the elite. second half, 4.6. Okay, not so the same elite. as 2018. Yeah. yeah. Um, this year, it's still pretty pretty close, first half and second half, honestly. ERA has gone from 3.4 in the first half to 3.7 okay. uh, since July 1st. I mean, so that being said, it is on the way up. It's not much of an eyesore yet, but we'll I guess we'll see how his – starts through the next month go right so and that's something dream, to keep an eye on right for sure and that is the dream that he puts it together this year listen it's really interesting too to have seen him struggle a little bit in august i mean his first two starts with the jays were lights out and everyone was incredibly excited and then his next two were not very good right and he really put it together the last start he had and it was because pete walker tinkered with his delivery right and brought his his arms swung up like this, mm-hmm. and now they're lower like they like the adjustment they made with Ross Stripling earlier in the year. And Burrios was lights out. So hopefully we have another Ross Stripling thing on our hands here where Walker managed to pinpoint exactly where his struggle was or what the other teams were picking up and made the, the proper change. That's the hope, right? That's, that's <laughs> the silver lining, optimistic, glass is half full, and I love it. Uh, moving on now, uh, Gregory Mann commented on YouTube, nothing speaks louder than success, and Manoa, Ryu, Robbie Ray having great seasons. Uh, Robbie Ray having one of the best seasons in Blue Jays pitching history, uh, especially after last season uh, that he is in Cy Young contention. This is the best turnaround for a player in the MLB this year. It's insane what Robbie Ray is doing. It is absolutely insane what he is doing, man. Like, he just, after last night's performance, by the way, is the first pitcher to pitch a 1,000 innings and have the highest strikeout per nine inning rate. Not the first pitcher, but he has the highest strikeout per nine inning of any pitcher who has pitched up to 1,000 innings, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, you look at his numbers. We don't need to get too deep into it, but, I mean, he's got He is leading the AL right now with 202 strikeouts. That's two more Mm -hmm. than Garrett Cole. He has a whip of 1.01, an opposing batting average of 208, and an ERA of 2.7. He's been everything you could ask for in an ace. Like, second in ERA. He's second in whip. He's second in opponent's batting average. He's first in strikeouts. This is a guy they took a flyer on and signed for $8 million. Like, unbelievable. You can hate everything this front office has done, and you can dwell on stuff like Brad Hand was DFA'd today, so we gave up Riley Adams for nothing pretty much. But also, I would like to say I am impressed that the front office was like, you know what? We've got a ton of lefties that are doing far better than Hand is. There's no need in the middle of a playoff race to try and let this guy find it in September. Let's get rid of him. Something to be said for that, man. Something to be said. Absolutely. All right. This next one is a little lighthearted here. 
Uh, Dulcimeris says, when you guys interview Kevin Smith, please ask him if he's a fan of the other Kevin Smith from Jay and Silent Bob and Clerks fame. I will do that, I guess. <laughs> right. I'm sure he's I heard that it. a time no, or two. No, but... I, I think that's funny, and I, I'm sure he has heard it many times before, but I will uh, bring that up with him. I mean, we're big Kevin Smith's fans, so it would be really cool if we could somehow manage to get both of them on one day to oh, talk Blue Jays. Kevin versus Kevin. I love it. Kevin versus Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll get Kevin Smith to rank his favorite Kevin Smith movies. Well, we are speaking of Toronto Blue Jays third baseman Kevin Smith, by the way, who hammered his first home run of his major league career just a couple games ago to help them beat Detroit there and take that Tiger series. He should be joining us this week. Now, he wanted me to reach out to him yesterday, so I did. No response yet. I know they do have an off day on Thursday, so the hope is that we can sit down with him. Now, the nice thing with Kev is that he has been back and forth with messages with me, so I'm fairly confident this is something that's going to happen we just need to kind of hang tight and see when it is. Awesome. Look forward to that. Uh, okay, now moving into our Discord. Uh, slightly used commented, Bo running the stop sign. I love it. Thoughts? I mean, Obviously, it this is in reference to the game the other day where he was rounding third and got the pretty aggressive stop sign. but The very aggressive stop did sign. Did not think twice <laughs> and, uh, and scored. I mean... I think, in all honesty, if the throw was on, he's probably out dead to rights, but the throw yep. was off by quite a bit, and it worked out yeah, nicely. He, he challenged the arm in the outfield, and it worked out. This is the thing. What do I think? It worked out, so I'm all for it. <laughs> no, I also that's, know, that's it, right? But, buddy, I also know the type of ball fan I am, and I would have been so mad if he was thrown out at the plate and ran the stop sign. Well, I would be so upset. It would I be believe, something we'd be talking about on Friday nonstop. <laughs> I believe that was the second the second run in a six run inning. Yes. So if he's out at home, that shuts things that down pretty quick. Changes quick, doesn't it? the dynamic of that inning. So, but that I don't know. I, I just quick. really love the aggressive mentality and like, regardless of what's going on in the lineup, that the kids that are in the lineup are playing their hearts out right now. Last night's game was so much fun, dude, and yeah. really speaks to everything you're saying about the aggressiveness. Gerard Dyson was just so much fun to make watch things happen. He's a guy who can handle his bat. He's got a ton of speed, great in the outfield. I mean, wasn't thrilled about him getting picked off there, but that said, everything else he did was great. Forcing uh, movement on the infield, right? Just opening up holes there with his aggressive base stealing. No, absolutely. Well, we're going to we're gonna touch on Jared Dyson in okay. a second here, so we won't go yeah. too deep into the weeds here. Yeah. Um Last Friday in Discord, uh, Jeremy says, and this is kind of a, an exchange we had. I had back and forth with him, but he says, uh, so bear with me. This is a longer one. Yep. Palacios and Smith started today. We gave up on the playoffs. I said, LOL. He said, seriously, Palacios cost us that game, referring to the error in center field. Uh, they are just trying out AAA guys right now. They've written off the playoffs. Lame. And I said, well, I'm trying to be the optimist here, right? I said, well, Springer's injured, so I don't know. His response, Gritchick. Well, I said, well, Gritchick isn't exactly hot right now. To which he countered, well, he's not a AAA kid hitting 200 that's learning how to play center field. Which is tough to argue with. So True. He's, now, he says, in Palacios, di- okay. Let me just finish this and then we'll, we'll dissect we'll it. Dive, this we'll is the dive last right thing here. That. So he says, you have to go with major league players this time of year if you're trying to make the playoffs. Guriel, Teo, Dickerson in the outfield if you don't want to play Gritchick. But you can't be trying out Palacios at center field in the last 35 games of the season. He said, Smith, why is he at third? They're trying out AAA guys right now, which is fine if you have given up on the playoffs. I'm just saying the Jays are telling us the season's over. I can't really argue a lot, with that. A lot, a lot, a lot to unpack there. So there, there, he's on to something, but I, I think he's reading too much into it personally. And here's my take on this: Josh Palacio, friend of the show. Yep. So maybe I'm biased. Okay? <laughs> okay, I will start with that. 
However, we're talking about a guy with eight years of pro ball experience in the outfield. This isn't just some guy who is trying out center field, right? Like this is a guy who literally has had seven minor league seasons where his primary position is center field. So there are brain farts and there are poorly played scenarios in different ballparks. Obviously that Detroit Comerica park in Detroit is a big cavernous Mm -hmm. stadium. And if you misplay a ball, it can go a long way. And that's why mm-hmm. he had a inside the park home run. I also want to talk about that play for one real quick second here, okay. because if you pay attention to the replay, yes, Josh missed it. And Palacio cost the game technically, mm-hmm. but Corey Dickerson's throw to the cutoff man was God awful. It was, it missed him a hundred percent. It was way off into left third base left field third base area Mm -hmm. and the ball had to be run down and that's why the guy it wasn't a triple it was a home run so it was a team effort on that and we can't put it solely on palacio and when it comes to kevin smith santiago espinal is on the dl right or on the il sorry right now there's not a lot of options with kevin on the il where like where do you go no and i think uh kind of where i feel about this is we do have some very big series coming up against the A's, against the Yankees. Um, I feel like while we aren't entirely throwing the playoffs away, uh, we do need our best players for those series. Agreed. It's so time this to may just down the hatches. This may just be an opportunity where we're like, look, it's the Orioles. No offense to the Orioles, but. But offense. Hopefully, (laughs) yeah, hopefully we can get past the Orioles and still have like some of our guys get rested. Because like once we get through this Orioles series, I don't think we have time for rest days anymore. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I think it's all hands on deck from this point on. Now let's let's tie that into major league players. Let's tie that into the Jared Dyson signing. So Panama Derek. Uh, asked us in the discord what are your thoughts on the jared dyson claim it kind of surprised me but maybe it's a sign that springer will be out of the lineup a little longer than we expected so this was a couple days ago he sent this to us and obviously springer made his debut yesterday so that portion is irrelevant i kind of like the pickup this is a guy who has been there and done that 37 years old is he as fast as he used to be? No. Is he still one of the fastest guys on the Blue Jays? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, he Absolutely. is. He's a guy who has stolen base acumen and has done it time and time and time again. I know that he's not technically an everyday player at this point, but you know what his acquisition reminds me a little bit of? What's is that? Ben Revere from 2015. Mm-hmm. Very similar player. Now, listen, obviously, Ben Revere put the bat on the ball a lot better than Dyson did and just did that his whole career. Dyson's always been a guy that's kind of defense first, but we saw that in his debut. He was flashing the leather. He looked good in center field, and this is a guy that I think we're going to see George Springer in the DH position quite a bit. I think he was even maybe allowed to rush himself a little to come back. I don't think that... I think if the Jays were in a playoff spot, and five games up, I think we would see Springer next week. Yeah. So do you think this is this is push Springer? I don't think they're being reckless, by the way. I just think that, you know, they're going to go with him at DH and just be careful. I think and... you're I think you're right. I watched a, an interview with Buck Martinez uh, just this morning, and he was kind of saying the same thing, that this Dyson hmm. addition is kind of an indication that maybe the Jays do just plan on DHing Springer the rest of the way. And... Uh, I guess that's that's a good thing, right? Like you said, we we kind of need him. We can't really afford to wait two weeks to have him yeah. back one hundred percent, but he can still help us with his bat and with his smarts. And look on at the what base Dyson path. did yesterday. Look at what Dyson did yesterday in that number nine hole, right? Yep. He took some walks. He was chaos on the base path. No, absolutely. It's took a I'm, couple bases. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, there's reason to be optimistic, but we are definitely running out of time. Thirty three games remaining. We're at sixty eight wins. 
we've been kind of saying all year that you need 90 to make the playoffs. So we need to go 22 and 11 in yep. the next five weeks. They Not sure impossible, do. but man. Now they are four and a half games back of that second wild card spot. If we get lucky and the stars align and the baseball gods smile on Blue Jays fans, they take the O's tonight. The Red Sox lose, and we go into September 1st, three and a half games back. Wouldn't and that be? I that, just got goosebumps, Scott. I just got goosebumps. Like, let's be serious, man. It could September be the air conditioning, 1st, but I just got goosebumps. Three and a half games back. That where, is something. That's, that's real, man. That yeah. is real. Anyways, we'll leave it at that, and we'll we'll get to the live stream here. But thank you, everybody, for joining and watching. Always appreciate the walk-off community. Of course, if you would like to leave a comment, feel free to do so in the comment section here on YouTube. You can always reach out to Adam and I on our socials. I look after Twitter. That's at walk-off podcast. Adam takes care of the Instagram. That's the walk-off podcast. Thanks again. And again, every single Tuesday we stream, which is brought to you by yourrate.ca. Join us every Tuesday. Cheers.